Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special edition episode of the Wild Card Podcast, Bot 2025. Well, gee, it's finally here, man. This has been the well-awaited episode for a lot of our fans here of the league and, of course, of the program, Bot 2025. We'll have two episodes on this. We're going to have the first episode of me and you recapping it, and then the big one with me, Grimm, and Lamas, of course, at the old end of the season here when we get closer to the end. But, G, your thoughts on the uh, old bot here, man? New com- new, new program coming in. Definitely a lot of uh, change and intrigue to it. We've been testing it out. Your thoughts, your initial thoughts. You had about, what, one or two tests on it, I think, before? I think I played, I think I played like a series or two on it. It was just against you, just kind of feeling it out, um, whatnot. But I mean, it's a uh, kind of like a whole new evolution for the league, pretty much. I mean, we start we started it last year. This is our second season, and uh, already gone to the point where we have our own bot that we've developed now that will be used uh, going forward. So, I I'd say it's very exciting times. There's going to be a lot of features uh, added in that the uh, current what we use does not have and it's features that I think are going to really help the uh, flow of gameplay and also um, give give it a little more back into the players hands which I think is really good and something we've definitely been looking for especially with this season absolutely it has been a a whirlwind season for sure well let's get into the bot origins and we we'll start with let's start with our friend Grim Reaper right MGR for those of you know him the server D1 player obviously from Canada and Gee, the way Grim explained this bot to me when he first kind of talked about this was in 2023. Somewhere around, I would say, late July, early August, Grim came came to me with an idea and said, Hey, Kay, I, I really like what we're doing here in this league. I think I can help you with the bot and make an actual program to where it's a specific league-based bot. And I said, oh, yeah, Grim, that, that's excellent, man. Let's, let's run it. Man, we really didn't have much of a base in 2023. Just more was the you know, more to see the pants, right? Just kind of flying off the wall. But somewhere around, I would say January, February, you started to give me some of these suggestions, and I was really liking it. And we really didn't touch it much in March and April. But once we got to about May, I started to see what he was doing with it. Started to code a lot of the the new commands. Of course, everything's now ref controlled. You look at we'll talk about the new feature. Everything's ref controlled. You got custom cards. And just the really thing, the really thing, the really cool thing I like about this G is it really is UX and UI built into it. And the user experience is way better than I've ever seen on a bot. The interface is great. Obviously, it's in beta, right? I'm not going to talk about some of the things we've had to deal with, but for the most part, it's really putting the player's mindset. It's back in the player's hands, right? Because right now, what we're seeing is <laughs> anything but. We start putting these tools in right resources as as you always see on a table check a lot of it's privatized a lot of it's for the fans and the origins really of it just came down and grim saw a gap basically in the in the league and you know he wanted to bring in a, a program here that's going to help make the playing field and of course a little bit i guess you could say fresh more of a fresh face bot because the old bot right now the current one yeah, it's a little outdated, sure. This a lot of this new stuff is more cutting edge, and let's face it, it's it's a new bot. It's called new for a reason, right? And and it, it, the origins are just fascinating because it's coding. It's I know as you have more experience. I've never coded in my life. I mean, maybe maybe once or two. I took an HTML class way yeah. back in the day. Mm-hmm. But you're, you're you might have a little more experience with coding. You're just your thoughts on. The bot, just your not really first in Just your thoughts on the bot origins and the story. And you know, you know Grim from some of the communities as well. He's always had a passion for this, for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've known Grim for a while now. Been uh, part of a, a prior community with him, and still am to this day. But um, you mentioned it here. Um, I mean, I do have some programming experience, although for me, it's more or less just programming based on making websites and whatnot. Uh, HTML, maybe a little Python here and there. That's uh, this is a whole new different thing. MGR has a whole set of skills uh, to uh, make this bot, and uh, it's something I probably could not do. Um, and I think I think we we really appreciate uh, Grim taking giving his skills to the league to uh, give us this bot here because I mean I think with this bot this changes the whole game here because. Um, First two seasons, of course, we use the um, dis- the uh, Uno Discord bot made by. Um, Stupid Lazy. Cat. Yes, Stupid Cat, yes. Uh, Stupid Cat, which is some, one that was very popular for a while. This was also the same bot that was used back in the uh, 
the old victory lane days, uh, which I you yes, you sir. could trace you could trace that to the origins origins of the league, but that's not not necessarily, but um, kind of like the prehistoric league before it. But um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, this is something new coming for twenty twenty five. It's going to be a lot of different things we're going to be able to do with it, including a um, little bit more control on our side of how uh, things uh, get programmed within the bot and a bunch of different, fe- fe- different, bunch of different features that um, that we could have to make both the player and the fan experience better. So I think we're going to dive right into it in a bit, but uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, discussing this on the podcast here. Yeah, and G, the new features we're going to talk about, obviously... I want to thank Cody Lamas for that great bat drop. I know he works hard on these bat drops. What he really did work hard on was the PowerPoint. I have the PowerPoint. Obviously, you fans at home can't see it. It's just an audio show. But I have the PowerPoint pulled up, and, and the PowerPoint really is going to dive into what we're expecting here. So we'll talk about a little bit about the features, as G said, a little bit of how we started this and the automation things. You look at the features, G, the first feature I want to highlight, I think is an absolute game changer is the card history tab. Obviously, audio, we have to break this down. But picture this, right? You have your hand, your table, and then a card history tab. So what is card history? Uh, card history is basically this. You have red, you have green, you have yellow, you have blue, you have your action cards. And let's say a red 2 is played. Well, the, the, the bot will now log that. Okay, a red 2 has been played. And then your opponent plays a red 3, right? Okay, it's now live. And then so on and so Oh, color switched. Green 3, right? Okay, it gets logged. Then your opponent plays a green four, and you ditto it back. All that gets logged. And the key with that is when it gets logged, which is important here, when it gets logged, you can now track that and really make a, a an accurate assumption of what the ammo could do. So let's say we have four action cards off the board, and three of them are plus fours, and one of them is a plus two. Now you can almost time when the ammo could be played. It can be a little bit more calculate it's not just a guessing game where you see right now that's the biggest thing of course you got the footers and headers right there's always going to be how many cards remaining discarded right and of course they'll say in bold right how many cards were played that has been since updated from the powerpoint we now have the game it's just in the, the the card history is now for an individual game at first we had like 252 cards was played in a series that has now been changed to just the individual game once the game ends and resets G, your thoughts on the card history tab? Obviously, this is a tab that a lot of people, I think, were looking for, for the people that don't know how to almost track the ammo or those words, card count. This is a game changer for them. Your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, I think the best way I can think of this is, um, you know, this might be a term you're unfamiliar with, but um, in a fighting game, when you have to do like a prob- like a difficult input um it may be really good, but it might be really challenging for pl- for players who are a little bit newer and a little inexperienced. Because like tracking the cards was definitely something you could do beforehand, but it was very very difficult to do, and you'd have to do it for a long time. And also sometimes it's not even guaranteed you have it gets to the point where it could be crucial. Um, because usually you have to get at least 10, 15 minutes into the game before that really starts kicking in. Um, but this is kind of a slight change to uh, make it a little easier for players to be able to track the cards and be able to formulate different strategies on what their opponent may have, because I think that's one of the biggest aspects of this game is figuring out what your opponent has. Um, those first five minutes are usually just going to be a dogfight to just try to get to the end, but once it kind of settles out into that longer pace game, if that's going to be what it offers, that's when that card t- uh, history tab is really going to set in, and you're really going to uh, be using that a lot more to see, figure out what um, possibilities um, are in your opponent's hand going forward. So uh, definitely a really, really good tool that I think is going to help a lot of players develop their game more. And I'm excited to see how people use it to their advantage as it's kind of, it's again, it's a thing that you definitely could have done before, but it was significantly harder. But now it's a little easier for all the players to be able to use the tracking of cards as a way to be able to figure out what could possibly be left on the board because uh, this tracks everything. And if you, as long as you have a good knowledge of how Uno works, because um, it's uh, two cards per number except zeros, um, and then two cards for the special cards, and then four wild plus fours and wilds. So with that simple knowledge, you could really go a long way in figuring out what's both left in the uh, draw deck uh, or the draws and what's left uh, possibly in your opponent's hand. So I think that's going to play a big factor, especially in those longer games. Yeah, and then the thing, G, is now we can start... I don't want to say debating this, but there is a very high chance that pace management's back. 
But right now, we have seen how many Plan A games have we seen? <laughs> a lot, right? A lot of Plan A games, and and then those aren't the best games, right? We, we both know, and we both are, I would say, students of the game, right? Or or mentors or masters of the game in in, in our circle of life of Uno. We like longer games, right? The, the the more drags out, the more skill becomes. When it's a short Plan A, four or five minute game, yeah, it don't feel it don't feel like we actually played. Now with this, you have to be a little bit more pace managed, right? You can play a little more mental games. And, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! You know, not, no one's no one's moving at a speed of light anymore, right? <laughs> you could throw people off, and that's uh, that's something though. But that's the old card history tab. We'll move over to the next tab, which, in my opinion, is another interesting tab, right? It's it's kind of the old table, but in a different way, the card table tab. So what the changes on this one, RG, is it's privatized. Now, what that means is you don't have to check table. The ref will not have to check table next year. No, the, the, the rule of, oh, every seven minutes, that's gone, right? That's going to have to be adjusted, if, if not deleted, where you don't have to check the table as a ref. All you got to do is let the players do it. And what we wanted to do here is bring it back in the players' hand, privatize it, right? Make sure they know what's going on. Every single card table, whatever, whatever it may be, right? Everything is bolded, so the, the power play is now there. So if you have one power play in a series, it's now bold next to the cards, right? It's got the current card. Flares at the bottom, as you'll see. I've seen in this picture here, I'm looking at 83 cards remain, discard 11. Of course, it has the custom card now. And, uh, yeah, I, I think this is a great change, G, with the table. Everything's in bold power play. It's, it's privatized. Now, the key thing to look at this is the fans can view this, right? And, Look, we're allowing this early, right? Let's let's see how it goes. We're going to see what the fans think of it, but we're allowing that early early access, and it should make the game more interactive and the fans a little more interactive. Oh, you know what? Hey, I don't have to worry about an Uno table check in public. Now, the Uno table is Uno T. If for some reason the the hand or the, the table goes off or whatever, okay, you can always use Uno T, but for the most part, privatized game table. I think it makes the game better. It sure may nullify my old classic KT and go sneaks, right? We, we love the sneaks, but you know what? For the game, I'm okay with sacrificing that and overall for the fan experience. That's the most important thing. So your thoughts on a tail being privatized and your overall thoughts and changes on it? I think this is really going to put this more into the player's hands on checking how many cards the opponent has. Um, obviously, with the privatized table, I think that does kind of um, nerf and damage the uh, sneak attack strategy, which could be big, especially if your opponent has some big hands and they're not aware you're at Uno. Um, yeah, but I think that's kind of the thing with this bot. There's going to be things that we add that are both beneficial for a lot of things, but also may take away a few things, and I think that's just one of the consequences of that. Um, although I think I think that is a consequence uh, that we can take because we have kind of seen the uh, sneak attack strategy sort of just kind of diminished down you don't really see it much in the later rounds uh just maybe a few careless mistakes in the uh first part of the tournament but um it's going to be more in the player's hands to figure out what you got and then you can still go for the sneak attack but you're going to go for a big risk here because you don't know how much the opponent's checking their checking their uh table pretty much so there is still the public table option which i think could be used to put an interesting perspective i know we talk about mind games a lot um in this uh, podcast i think that's definitely something that keeping that there can help with the mind games possibly so i think there is still the option for the public table but for the most part i think you're going to see a lot of these people players doing private checks before they uh go with their play um and uh throwing that public table check out there which is still an option could be put a little bit of um put a put uh put yeah could put a little bit of a wrench in the uh, the mindset for what the opponent may want to do next, because that could just be a little bit of a warning shot, possibly, and make them uh, get a little frantic. So I'm going to be curious to see how that goes. But, um, yeah, with the privatized change, I think there's going to be um, a lot more management in terms of checking how much it, how many cards are left for both players and just simply being aware, because at this point, if the sneak attack happens, it's pretty much your own fault. And G, you were a big proponent, obviously. You were a big proponent of upping the... The table checks from the refs. We we all we at first started what I think it was three minutes at first. Every three minutes, check it right. The refs got they went to five and seven. This is great. What's your thoughts on that change? Where now the refs don't got to do anything right now. The auto ref, which we'll talk about a little bit later, the the auto ref right. Basically, the the players can police themselves. There's no need for the commentator or the ref to check it. We have all that data. Your thoughts on that change? That's probably the biggest change here for the fans and of course the refs. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, and I think that's just a better change for the spectator experience because now we don't have to um, 
possibly interrupt the uh, flow of players to just get a table check going. We could just do that whenever, whenever uh, to keep the spectators updated. And we could also do it without um, leading off on the players on, oh, this person has this many cards or anything and whatnot. It could just be a visual thing to uh, just keep player uh, the spectators updated. It's kind of like kind of like in a game of poker where um, the graphics yes. they'll show you the they'll show you the hands, but obviously they're not going to say anything about what it is and whatnot. So it could be kind of similar to that, although. Uh, we, we won't quite uh, have the cards shown because uh, there's definitely ways to abuse that, so uh, that will not be getting added. But um, I think being able to show the amount of cards left um, publicly whenever we can to the uh, spectators is going to be great for them as they can keep track of that whenever. Yeah, and then I think with the table checks too, G, the, the one thing you got to really be paying attention to is, of course, you don't know when the player is checking on the other end. But there's a way to just say, you know what, why risk it? I think the risk first reward on a sneak attack, too, just looking back at that, it's probably going to be low. You're going to have to be very, 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 very creative and strategic about it. I, I think it's almost gone, which is fine, because there's only a couple players to do it anyway, and I can accept that as well. All right, gee, the next one, I think it's a big one here, the card hand tab. I think this is great. Now, this has been... Updated absolutely willy nilly. It's been ever changing, but the biggest thing you gotta note here is two things. One, no more bot DMs. Congratulations, right? Hey, if you didn't like the bot DMs or hey, they, they, they can't DM you this hand, it's gone, right? It's over. We're done. We're not. We're not seeing that ever again. And in my opinion, G is probably for the better because <laughs> that was annoying sometimes. And the it cool was. thing about this, the cool thing is, all available cards are bolded now. I want to be clear about this. We are working on something where we can underline the last card. There's been some coding issues with that. We are still open to suggestions on that. I know there is a, there is a feature where the, the current bot has the last card play. It was a red two. It says we don't have that. So what's the benefit of it? The, the, the thing I like about this, G, is it's a shopping list, right? And I'm going to send you a picture so you kind of get a visual too of this hand. It's a shopping list, right? And with the shopping list... What I like about this is it really allows the player to say, hey, you know what? Everything's organized by color, right? There's no more crazy things where everything's bold. The available cards are bold to play. The other cards are not available. They're like, for example, you just see the picture here. Yeah. If it's not playable, right, it's not bold. It's just going to be in regular font. If it's playable, it's in, and that's going to be a visual change for our visual learners and I think this is going to be really beneficial for D2. And by the way, this is yep. for D1 and 2. D2 will be using this as well. I think this, I think this is really going to help the D2 players because a lot of them, too, sometimes like to rush things. And, of course, some of the D1 guys, too. But the D2 guys are newer. But this is going to give them a more chance, more of a chance to just say, hey, you know, I can relax. Don't got to sort through it. And the bullet points, too, are nice. It's just in bold, right? It gives a little bit of a, a unique flair to the league. And, of course, it's sell, it's – I believe it's selected by RGY, BB went by, so red, green, yellow, blue, and action at the bottom. That's always ever-changing, but the chopping list really makes it nice, and it's all or So your thoughts on the hand, of course, no DMs, and that's also privatized as well, like always. Yeah, of course. I mean, like, uh, I know for some players who just use the uh, hand button on the uh, prior bot, uh, you end the game, and then you have, like, 180 DMs for the Uno bot, which is uh, not the best thing uh, to clear up, but... Um, this new bot, um, the hand tab, um, it automatically sorts on your hand, so no more of this trying to look through dozens of dozens of cards. This is going to be absolutely useful when you have those 15 card starts or even you get those long plus four chains where you're up to like 20, 25 cards. going to be very helpful for those uh, players who are stuck in those situations to be able to um, see their hand. It kind of in a way how most people, when they play uh, Uno in person, they kind of sort their hands to uh, make sure it's all identifiable by what color they have and whatnot. So uh, yes, it is sorted um, RGYB and then you have your wilds at the bottom so that could be regular wilds and also plus fours. So um, I also think the uh, bolded, uh, the cards that are playable being bolded is great. Um, for D1 players, it's kind of whatever. I think the sword is enough, but I think for D2 players, some who, of which who may be newer to the game, actually, because we do have a few of those people, um, that's going to be really helpful because it's going to be a bit of a guide to um, tell them what's available and what isn't so we don't have mistakes where someone's playing a card they can't play and then they're just exposing their hand. So 
Um, overall, I think these are some really good changes. I think it's quality of life changes that I think uh, everyone is going to enjoy, and I don't think any players are going to have any complaints about that because no, you're not going to have to sort through um, unshuffled hands anymore, and I think having it all sorted and whatnot for you is going to be a really nice touch for these players as they're going through the game. Yeah, I think the card hand tab, the card hand tab, G, I think the, the biggest thing, this is more the UX I was talking about, the user experience is key. The interface is great. You look at the current card is still there at the bottom. So now, G, the nice thing about this, too, I, I personally like, which is really great, is that sometimes when you get a green three or a red three, it can get a little bit weird on the eye. Even for me, right, when you see a green three and a red three, it can get a little weird at night, right? You can get a little with the ball and say, hey, it can wake you up a little bit. It's going to be better for night games for uh, us more experienced guys like K2. He's not used to staying up late. So I, I, that's just something I've noted that's that's really helpful in the late night games. I, I got that bold text. It's like, man, I feel good. I feel good about it, right? I can, I can use it as a safety net. So that was just a little bit of some of the things I've noticed and why well, I've been playing around with it for sure. All right, G, next one, though, you look at the card hand tap is nice and that's always great. Uh, this is going to be more, we're going to go more to the ref side. Now, the ref the ref side will be a little different. We'll have the virtual ref, and, and, and we'll talk about this in a second. And then, the, the, of course, the human ref. Now, what's the human ref do? The human ref, well, the human ref still has to log games, but not really. What's going to happen is the human ref will only log the top part of the, 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 the log. For example, Masquerade May, right? acrobatic region that's samba 16 that still has to be automated but what's going to happen g is now we have average time built in and, and now we have second time so for the ref logs now everything is now checkable which means you can check the the log mid game which is a new feature we have so let's say you're in game seven right oh man i i don't feel i don't feel good about this it's, it's been a minute right i haven't checked it Oh, I checked it. I go, I type in Uno log and oh, we're 15 minutes. No wonder it's been a minute, right? And that, that's a big change right there. That gives you a chance to really track how long the game is going, right? Then check your card history tab. Maybe check that table. Keep toggling with the tools. And then for the ref, I mean, now, gee, we don't even really need a, how do I put it? We don't really need two or three refs anymore. We just need one, right? We, we There's been multiple times where, Oh man, Caesar! I need you to rep. But then there are times where I gotta operate this. It makes the life easier knowing that we we don't got type in a how many cards played. Oh, okay, that went 15 minutes, but we didn't know the seconds. Oh dang, man, that game went zero minutes. But I wish I would have known the seconds. Right? We really have simplified it down to where the ref is going to have a little bit more leeway to say, hey, all I gotta do is control it at the start. The players don't have to touch anything, right? It's, it's basically hands-off for the players. And, man, that's going to make things a lot easier. Your thoughts on the ref changes, G, and the fact that the, we can control it now. The players don't got to touch a penny. It's on the ref and, of course, the auto ref. I think this also makes it easier um, in general for players who might become refs at the start of the 2025 season since we're probably going to have a few more potentially being added since there's a whole um, potential system rework going on with um, refs that could go for both divisions uh, or just be D2 refs. So uh, that I think with those changes, it's going to be more accessible for people to get ref certified. And I think that's going to be a good thing because um, especially when you have matchups with international players or maybe uh, some players who are um, only able to do specific times, then that might be a little bit inconvenient for some players. So uh, being able to possibly have people who could ref from possibly different countries um, in different time zones actually could be a really big help there. So um, that, I think, is the biggest takeaway for me from this. I think all these changes uh, with it um, being easier on the ref is going to make it um easier for more people to be able to uh, try this and be able to uh, ref their own games uh, or well you know not not while they're playing but um, to be able to just ref games for um, tor tournaments for other players which I think is could be a really good thing and it makes it more um, open for players to be active and involved if they want to do more than just playing so uh, I think that's the thing I'm looking forward to most with that so uh, overall, again, most of these changes I think are re really great, and I don't think there's many issues with it. I think a lot of this is good quality of life stuff. Exactly. Ref I, right now, how to initial initialize a game. The ref, the, the human ref will say Ref I, KTG, right? You can then change your name. That's on the players. 
okay, G wants to change his name as long as it's appropriate to this G. You know, maybe I just want to say K. Right? And then that, that will show up in the log. It's a cool little feature. It's optional. It's something cool. Right. And then you can also do, you know, power plays now in there. Right. It's all automated, which is big. We'll talk about that a little bit later, though. And you can just auto set that to ref P to one. And then you got, uh, what, what, oh, something new. I don't think you, I'm not sure if you know about this, but now we have home table. You can actually have a turn indicator now. So what we've been testing is ref TI, 2 2, mm-hmm. 1 1 1 1, right? In the best of mm-hmm. seven. Or you can go 3 3 1 1. Super League for best of, That's huge. It's big because what that's going to do is it makes the game a lot more cleaner in the sense that we know whose turn it is. There's a footer at the bottom, of course, at the end of every game, which we'll get to in a little bit. It makes things a lot more just cleaner for the ref and the, the players that hand out to worry about things. And, of course, the biggest thing is just it's just automation. It's just quality of life change, as you said. And that's what we're here to do, right? The, the more we can automate the system, G, and, of course, as I said, combine human and auto – and work together in unison. It's a better, it's better Q of L, right? Q of L is better, and it makes the league more sustainable. We don't. Oh no, you know, we need more refs, right? We don't need them. We we have a human ref. We have an auto ref. Realistically, every let's face it, every game we have two refs now, right? And God forbid we don't have any ref. Well, I could always be there and say, okay, I know all the commands, and then I got the auto ref to back me up, right? So that's the nice thing. It's going to be a little bit more flexible in the schedules for people too. Anything else to add, G, or was that pretty covered? I think we pretty much covered all the details with that. Um, again, the um, the uh, turn order uh, just kind of makes it easier for when you go for a different series, like best of five, best of seven. Sometimes it might be a little different on those longer series. So um, if there's any changes to that, we don't have to recode it where um, it has to change the series length or best of 13 or something like that. We could just manually change that the right before the game. And, you know, one of the things I look at this, G, let's go to that power play. Man, let me tell you, the power play right now we have the system is basically this. Let's say G says Uno power play, right? The ref now has to say, in this current system we have, IKT, G used it, draw. And sometimes those second delays, I hate to say it, G, they can be very, very, very weird, right? And and sometimes we saw with JT in March, and say, oh, no, he, he, you know, done. Uno power play. The bot will then say G is p- called power play. Play your cards. KT will automatically get a card. Keep playing. It's a time warp, right? Basically, it's, a, it's, it's like you're entering a time warp. Now, I want to I want to preface this. There are, there as of now, obviously this is going to change. You know it. There is unlimited commands. That is probably changing, but we do have to make sure if we do if, if it's more majority unlimited command, we're going to have to figure out a, a happy median, right? Well, okay. We know we can't do that. Let's maybe six is the limit, right? The point is we don't want to kill defensive power play. That's one. But number two, more importantly, G, no more ref junk where, hey, you didn't draw. Right. You're done. We have the system. We have the the platform now to where the, the bot will give you the power play card. And we just continue the game as normal. I think that's great. It's a great change. There's no need to worry about. It. Basically, gee, the one second clause is gone, right? There's, there's no point. It, the, there's already an automatic timing. And basically, there's a timing and scoring loop into the bot already on when the power play happens. It's beautiful. It's great for the call out system to, you know, call out as well as calling Uno. There's a, there's a built in timing system. I think this is a, a specifically built thing for this league. Because there's no other league that I know of that has this power play. Your thoughts on just the power play coming into the game as more of just a automated tool instead of just having to rely on the human ref. Your thoughts on that change? I mean, I think this is definitely a change we've been needed for a while because power play is sort of a thing that, uh, I mean, you had the idea and we implemented it into the league. And uh, since we don't really um, know the people who run the uh, the bot we currently use, it's not really a way to implement that into the actual bot. So a lot of it has to be manual refing and then that can also also just cause some issues with how that plays out so um yeah i think that having power play automated is going to be huge um another thing also because um some rounds we don't necessarily have power play that obviously it can be turned off so if people just want to play a straight up game they don't really have to have it in there so i think that's really going to be a good thing going forward and um it's, a, it's nice that we have it finally implemented because this has been something we've been looking for for a while so 
Uh, I think overall this is just something to uh, help minimize any potential controversies that go down uh, in any games where a player may not listen to the referee. And that's the thing, right? We don't we don't need a JT situation. We got to go on the spot. Oh man, you you messed up. Keep drawing back to make it fair. None of that, right? Now there are there are some stipulations, right? If you forcefully made a mistake or you act, then we're gonna have to look into that. But those are things uh, we'll look into, right? And, and let's say let's say God forbid, G, someone does make a mistake. Oh, I I messed up, right? It's pretty simple at that rate. It's not going to give you a card. So what would happen is you messed up. We'll give it to you back manually. You power play. Fine. It's going to say no. Hey, look, he messed up. Just just draw here. Right. And that and that, that really is a important thing to say. The ref is still there. The human, the human element will still be there. It's just we don't want to leave it up to us if we don't have to. Right. Let's let's let the CPU do the talk. Let's, let's, let's do the coding, the magic do the talk for sure. So that, that that's what I look at for the power play. It's a very nice system. We'll work on defense, of course, as always. Now, gee, this is my favorite my favorite tab, one of my favorite tabs. This stats page. I love Hello. stats. I know you're a big stats guy. I'm the statistician. Now, yes, sir. That's right. It's what you said. Now, I'm going to send you the new updated G. I don't know. Have you seen the new updated one? I'm not uh, sure. it's, a, it's a three by three, right? The three by three with the emojis. Yes, I have seen it. You okay. could send you could send it again, but um, I have the seen it. Indy five hundred layup. Yeah, the old Indy five hundred. <laughs> so that that was that was the guy you see in pictures, Peter, right? Peter suggested a little bit of a three by three layout. Obviously, it makes sense, right? He, he was there at the five hundred and whatnot, but he really suggested. I think this is great. This is the biggest change, G. Because how many times have you raised your hand and said, "I got burnt by card luck, man." Well, next year you could say that, but a lot of it is where, what's the plus four wild ratio? Okay, maybe Peter here had a lot of plus fours, right? Or in this case, he had a lot of wilds. I had a, I had an even plus fours, but maybe my plus twos were just better. Or, you know what? I had a big advantage on reversing the skips and plus twos, and Peter dominated the wilds and the plus fours. Maybe it's fair. Right then, you have color switches. Obviously, the chain thing will be. I, I think that's going to be capped. But as you can see on this photo here, it says ten. We can think about capping that, but that's another story for our day. And the cards played has been pretty equal reverse. I think the biggest thing that G with these metrics is it gives the players a chance to reset the game. Right? Hey, you know what? We're three games in here. A lot of ammo is being played, along with the Uno log, which is uh, something. Important where you can check with the card start variety. Maybe you just don't feel comfortable with the ammo right now. It's getting a little too intense for both of you. Or maybe it's just not working for you. Maybe you go lower. Try to reset that out. Maybe, maybe go higher. Get some more ammo. Right? There's there's more ways to strategically pick a card start variety instead of just guessing, okay, let's go five. Uh, I'm going six. Uh, let's go 12. I think now with these stats, it gives you a lot more flexibility to become more one with the game instead of trying to play guessing game on oh well the stats I think there are 16 plus fours combined I think not anymore we have the data and that's the biggest thing with the data theoretically as long as it's a fair get you're not going to blame Carlo G because if because it, if it's 12 on 12 or even 15 on 12 let's say someone's got 16 plus fours and wilds versus six but if you have all the plus twos is that really a hosing, or is that you just not using the plus twos correctly? I think with these metrics, it's going to make the game more fair. And what's your thoughts on this? This is a big one. You're a stats guy, so I'm going to leave this one to you. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think having these stats readily available to you at the end of each game and then the series, I think, is huge because uh, not only does it help with the uh, tracking for additional information for the game, but it also, um, again, it can, it obviously, the stats. Um, they're mostly they mostly tell the story, but there could obviously be a few exceptions. Like maybe someone like had four or five plus fours in an entire series, but maybe four of them came in one game. So um, it can mostly paint a good picture. Obviously not a hundred percent, but it definitely does a better job at showing what went down during the game and match. And I think overall this is going to be really great for the stats because we could definitely have more information about. Um, different metrics that people may have. So, like, someone may get a lot of plus twos, and they may be, like, a plus two king, or someone maybe um, is an ace of the wild. So, 
Um, I think this is really going to be great information to um, let the players be able to see and also the spectators. So I think, um, and as I say this as someone who's big on stats and I'm basically the main person for stats in the league, um, really when it comes down to it, the more information that you're giving the people, um, the more fun facts and statistics and data points you have, it's better for the people to uh, track down and see um, to get a gauge of how the uh, game broke down pretty much. Yeah, I think the another thing too, G, with the stats, they update live, right? So if you see a plus four B, it's live. You can just click on the stats page and be like, "Hey, it popped up, right?" And maybe I can time the ammo better. It's it just, it's just, it's just better. It's just better overall, right? It's just a better overall experience. It gives you a lot more leeway, right, with the game ending stats. I think a lot of these are going to be interesting. Light switches is just going to be like a restricted plate race. <laughs> That's going to be pretty lit up. <laughs> no pun intended especially since how some of these players will go. Uh, Gee, your thoughts on this for D2? I mean, do you think this will make a big difference in D2, or do you think this is kind of a wait and see on certain players? Your thoughts on this for D2? And D1, they'll, they'll duck the water, but what about D2? Your thoughts on that, since you're the commissioner? Um, I think this one for D2, um, with the stats and whatnot, um, obviously it helps. I think that's, that's going to be really good for some players, but I think for others it's just going to be sort of like a uh, – as a sort of an aesthetic thing, like, oh, cool, that's fun, uh, or something like that. But I don't think it'll play as huge of an impact in D2 as it will D1, but it's definitely going to be something that people will take a look at throughout the game and then post-game as well. So, All right, I think that's fair enough, G. I think it's it's going to be a way and see over there. Like I said, it's a tool, it's a resource, use it wisely, as always. Now, another thing with the bot, too, obviously we have some commentating changes, and... Uh, Oh, man. Uh, gee, I'm going to be honest with you. You think I'm pretty cracked out commentary-wise when moments happen? Could you imagine KT wins on his wild? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I cannot wait to win on a wild card on my own card. I have the blue wild, right? The custom cards, I think, is a beautiful thing. It not only gives the fans a little bit of a flair. It's basically our players, right? Every D1 player that, that wanted to be in the game. And, of course, every... Uh, a few. Tester. There's, there's yeah, some tester. tester. A few D2 players, but most of yeah, the people most, who just wanted the test. Yeah, most only a couple. I think Alex is in their background. Me, hell, shout out to them. But for the most part, G, I think this is great. I think the you can toggle this, right? You don't have to worry about, oh, well, I don't want to play with these cards because it can be distracting. I understand. We just toggle it on. A lot of these commands are toggleable. I guess that's a word. Yeah, you can just toggle it on and off, and you don't have to worry about well, I don't feel comfortable here playing with these cards. You get distracted. You can just toggle it. And and that's the nice thing about this. The commentating game, you got live access to the bot. Of course, the bot's table, the bot's hand, not the hand, bot table, the bot card history, the bot stat. The the, the, the refs and the commentators will both. Benefit. I think this is great for you, G, because I think you're a guy that just kind of asks, no offense, but you kind of just ask run of the mill questions, right? And the same thing with short. We both discussed this. Now you actually can ask questions, but hey, man, look, the stats here don't lie. I think this is going to be great for you when you stream these, well, especially my games. You now can ask me, hey, Kay, look, you're getting kind of hosed here on plus two, but you got all the wild cards. That's usually your card. What's going on here? Right? You can now ask formidable questions because you have the history and the data. Thoughts on just the spectating commentate for you, especially when you commentate and host a game? Uh, yeah, I think this is definitely going to be something that makes more flair and is more fun for the players who are in the league. However, this is kind of like, uh, it's kind of like the MRE Uno custom deck where, um, you know how you have like Star Wars ones or like the minions or whatever, whatever the popular thing is, Mario. Um, and maybe some people don't like that. So I think the fact we do have this toggleable, uh, toggleable, or I don't think I said that right, but we have yeah. toggle on this, um. I think that's a good feature to have because I know some people are not really about the, uh, oh my god, it's uh, my logo on the yellow seven. Like, no, some people just want to play the game straight up, and that's all right. So um, that's not something you'll always see. Some players um, absolutely love it and they'll want to go with it, but if you have a player who's just like, all right, I'm just here to win, I don't really care about all this uh, aesthetic stuff, um, have it off, just play the game straight up. Um, again, it's just an aesthetic change, but... Um, I think it's something that's fun for the people who like it and not a requirement for those who are not very thrilled from it. It's on It's on the players, right, Gene? And, of course, I think this is one thing we have to probably 
Yeah, we can't. We can't. Oh man, I don't like a game. What? You got. You got. You got to make a decision before the game. You can't just say game one. I don't like it, and then let's have it for. No, it's got to be consistent. We can't just keep toggling back and forth. We got to before the game, before the match. And there's gonna be new protocols on before we do the ref rules and stuff. We're gonna say you have a decision. You have a couple decisions to make. Do you want custom cards on? Right, and if you say yes, then okay, we keep it on. If you say no, we gotta turn it off. Right. Now, yeah. if one player wants it and the other player doesn't, we gotta be both unison. We gotta turn it off or turn it on. But most likely, if it's just if it's if one wants it and one doesn't, we gotta turn it off. If both yes. want it, we keep it. On. That's basically how it works for that. We'll discuss that in our time. There's just things we just gotta learn. It's a learning process for sure. Now, that's pretty much it for the specs and the commentaries uh, commentary. Now. Let's look at some other things here, just kind of what to expect here and other new features. Uh, we have, I already said turn indicator. We have a couple things in the world. Live analytics. Uh, I'm going to be real with this one, Z. We're not going to try to make this chess, right? Because we all know who loves chess. <laughs> and uh, we're not going to say that guy's name. But the point is, if we start making this like chess, it gets a little weird. We want to make the game, of course, important to the player. Having those live analytics, maybe 33 to 66 percent, just simple analytics on, on potential scenarios of what happens in the past on a certain card or whatever. We're trying to do stuff like that. This isn't AWS. This isn't next gen stats. Like we're, we're not we're not going to that level. But just sort of simple live statistics to do, simple live analytics for the players. We're trying to develop that. That's something to note. Other things you might see coming up in the future here. You might see a little bit of. Uh, just some gamesmanship on calls, right? So let's say in the, this current bot, you know, I don't know, Uno play green two. Oh, you can't play a car here, right? Mm -hmm. That's not that's not there anymore. It's on the it's self policing, right? There's no mess that's going to come up, right? That that's on the players to police that. So if, if someone makes a wrong call, right? It's just not working. It's on the players to police that. It's not going to say. The bot's not going to. You have to decipher that. What does that mean? More mind games. Who does that favor? Well, the people that like mind games. So more mind games will be played next year. But I don't think that's a bad thing, G. I really don't. I think it adds another element of layers of strategy that you would like to see in the game. I, gee, I remember this last year. I, you know, I have a really good memory. You know that I have an elephant-like memory. <laughs> and I, uh, I remember you doing... Uno draw on a green nine. I remember this like yesterday in our Super League match, and you were hoping I would. I think I think you were hoping I draw. Or no, ho you hoping hoping I would yeah draw. But I, mm -hmm. I instead played a card, right? And it was uh, it was kind of funny. We really haven't seen it this season. I know we will see it though in Super League. We haven't seen it this season, but maybe we won't, right? Because we we don't have many Super League players currently in. I know I'm still in, but I don't really do that a lot anymore because I know the spot's been weird. But the point is, you could see a lot more of those mind games come back because it is self-policing. Uh, what's your thoughts on just some of those those little mini things, right? That I just added on, of course, the, the the tracking of numbers, right? A little bit more with the card history, the mind games coming in. Just your thoughts overall on some of the minor changes that we we want the players to have, of course. Yeah, again, I think with most of these changes, it's more to uh, give back to the players a little bit in terms of the uh, the mental aspect of the game. Um, obviously the analytics are not going to be something that people look up because you're not going to like just look in the middle of the game and then see like, oh, I only have a 5% chance to win. That sucks. Uh, no, that's, that's not going to happen. <laughs> but um, again, it's more just mainly for the spectator experience, which again, this bot's kind of uh, doing both in helping the player experience and also the spectator experience improve. So I think for that, this is more of a spectator uh, lean sort of thing. So yeah, that's about all I got to say on this one. Yeah, and that's the nice thing about this, G. You can just use those little minor things and uh, just kind of run with it. And just looking at some of these things here on the, the power play, what are some cool things we have? Obviously, G, one of the biggest things is, uh, look, you could theoretically, hey, I got to run to the groceries. You could stop the game, right? And there's no five-minute timer activity. You can... You can run it, right? You can run it as soon as you're done with the groceries. Come back fresh, and you go from there. I know. I don't want. I don't, it's kind of a touchy subject, kind of is. There is a timeout thing being worked on. We need at least what sixty-seven percent, sixty-six percent of the majority of the league to, to approve that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, that's something we're not going to discuss on this show, but that is something we're working on if the fans want it. 
And that's the nice thing about this is it's just really open source. And we're kind of getting to the end of the presentation here. Yeah, the, pl the players are helping developing with us. And I think the nice thing about this on this PowerPoint, too, is you look at the way things have been, G, with the, the testing right now. I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about it. The testing's been solid. It's been phenomenal, I would say, in terms of just getting some latency issues worked out. And, you know, just things that I personally think need to be done with uh, minor changes. I know Stingray's been big on a help page. we got a settings page coming in. We've got a couple other things we're working on. Peter with the stats, of course. Alan made some suggestions. Average duration average duration is new, which is nice. You get an average duration of five games on a set. I think it's just really all about you putting that fan experience in the players, giving them some leverage, right? Not not kitchen sink in this thing. But uh, just to kind of wrap up, we, we kind of basically discussed all the new features. What is your first impression when you saw the bot, G, when you got a chance to play with I've been playing it with it like a madman, but you had that one or two games. Just your thoughts on the first. But what was your legit first impressions of this and how you can use it to your advantage? And, of course, just advantage as a ref, too, because you are a ref. Yeah, I thought this was uh, really neat, uh, def definitely a different perspective, and I think it was including a lot of things that a lot of people have been asking for for a while. Uh, again, the current bot we don't use doesn't really get updated anymore, so any suggestions that made are made there kind of go to a, uh, a, a kind of go fall under a deaf ear. So I think the fact that we have a client base once again, um, any changes that we may need to make, we can make on the spot, and I think overall um the visualization the aesthetic of it um i think there's a lot of things that go into it even like the small little details that really improve the experience for everyone i think i'm very excited uh, to see how this goes going to next season to be honest because i think there's a lot of positive feedback from a lot of players who've tested so far and we're gonna have more testing for players throughout that is another thing also um there is a slight change uh with how this goes because uh mainly this would apply to d2 but um, you technically didn't have to test to be in the tournament, but uh, for next year, you have to test about, otherwise you will not be allowed to play. So that's going to be a slight change. So everyone's going to have to go through, go through testing um, either in the middle of the season or during the off season to make sure they're approved going into the 2025 season. So that's a slight change there. Everyone will get a taste of the bot. And uh, from what we've seen so far, a lot of positive feedback, but we've also had some good suggestions. So it's going to be a little different, a um, little bit different of a bot than what we have right now when we come to the uh, first match of the 2025 season. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll actually see that a little bit differently too, G, because we have an off-season series of Vapors that you're going to see some off-season rivalries. So that's going to be your first action of it, which is nice. Thanks, shout out to Vapor. I want to give him that shout. So we'll see some of that. But that's, of course, just going to be more run-of-the-mill gameplay, right? Just making sure everything's good and whatnot. All right, G, well, now to the next topic. That's kind of, oh, my, for, actually, what am I saying? Excuse me, my first impression. Yeah, my first impression, I was like a kid in the candy store, G. Hey, you know me, man. You give me more tools, uh, I'm always going to, like, tools, right? It, it's it, You got your shovel, you got your, your hammer, right? Of course, you got your old tool belt around the belt. And, of course, you got your, your pickaxe, as I like to call it, if you're digging. You got a lot of tools, right? There's a lot of tools here, a lot of bells and whistles. The more bells and whistles you can throw in there, the more you can – in, in, in my case, since I'm spearheading the testing opera, the more you can break it, the better, right? And, of course, this will be hosted, right? This will be hosted on my end eventually once it's finished and all public. And I believe it is going to be a public bot. Gee, this will become a public bot. Obviously, we don't want this bot being used like a, like a glass of water and just refilling it every time. We have to be selective on who uses it. Most likely, this is going to be league only to start. I don't think we can put this out public IPO, I don't think it's worth it. You have to really think about just this is a custom league, right? There's no other league on Discord that I'm aware of that has power play. You'd also have to think every single time do they want to turn off the cards every time. I, there's there's a lot of things that just wouldn't make sense, right? So you have to look into that. Obviously, there's some some interesting things we've got to look into that, but for now, I, I overall, I'm, I'm happy with it. This is MG, we both grew up on the Victory Lane server, man. If you had told me we'd be having this kind of stuff six years later, I would have called you high, probably. No offense, but I never thought some of this stuff would ever be implemented, especially for a guy like me who's been playing for, what, 21 years when I was doing backyard leagues and I was the victim of human shuffles where uh, you go outside for a couple minutes and they come back, oh, I got hosed, right? And now we have this these cool tools. It's fancy. It's it's great. I I, I I'm in love with it for sure, and I can't wait to see what we're going to see 2020. I think it's going to come back in the players' hands, which is great. 
So, Jay, what do you expect in 2025? What, what do you expect is going to happen in 2025 from, obviously, a D1 perspective? But give me a D1, D2 commissioner hat and, of course, a player and just an overall host. What, what do you expect in 2025? I know we have a slide for that, but what do you personally expect to see in 2025 with this bot? Go for it. I'm expecting, in my, uh, from my eyes, I'm expecting more of the strategy to play out, and there's going to be a bit less of the... Um... The, uh, the the monster hands per se because uh, I believe this is uh, sort of an unofficial thing coded in but um, I believe it's coded in at the start of the game you can't be given like absolutely absurd hands at the start like I, no one's gonna get three plus fours on the starting hand they get even if it's like 15 cards I believe that's something that's slightly coded in just to uh, not not necessarily to like kill the uh, kill the uh, a little bit of the uneven split and make everything 50 50 but no, to not make it like 80 20 because those ga those games let's be honest they're not very fun to watch so at worst cards are going to be like 70 30 so i i think that's going to be something that will be nice to see at least gives players who may not get the best hands at the start a chance to uh pull it around a put, again puts it back a little bit more into the player's hands not entirely obviously uno is a game where sometimes luck's going to play a factor so we're not trying to get rid of that that's just part of the nature of the game but um, to put a little bit of skill back into the player's hands, something we always look to do. So I think being able to have that, again, another benefit of the client side bot is definitely going to be very helpful going forward. But um, again, I think I'm, we're seeing going to be seeing a reemergence of a lot of different um, longer pace strategies going into 2025. A lot more uh, usage of uh, taking things slower and trying to think out your next play. Um, I think you're going to see less people just jumping into a play and hoping for the best. Um, people are going to take a second to uh, think and be calculated with it. And I think with the no with the uh, no inactive stall timer anymore, it's going to be a little bit more of an opportunity for players to um, uh, not have to feel like they have to rush their play. Although five minutes is a bit generous, but um, again, there's not an issue with that. Or if like there's a slight uh, call out from your professor or something, or like your parents or something, if you just need to take like five six minutes to just deal with that you can do that and then come right back so i think there's gonna be um it's a lot of good things that i think are good for the players and i think uh i think we're gonna see more players who definitely have shown more of a skill showcase rise to the top more often than what we see currently now so i think this is we're really gonna start seeing a uh league where for the most part most of the better players are the ones who are ending up um on top of the league or on, on a league table yeah, and I think one thing I look at this, G, you got to look and you have to understand when you have something new, when regulations are fresh, right? We're going to talk about what they expect. We saw it this year, right? When the regulations are fresh, certain people are going to hit it, right? There's, there's no doubt. They're going to hit the setup and they're going to hit the, the jackpot. All right, cards start variety. Oh, nice. Less power plays. Oh, nice. Right? New ways to call power. They're going to hit the setup. Same thing's going to happen here. The problem is, gee, what, I, what I personally see is this is such a wholesale change more than just a, a card star regulator or a less power play. This is a wholesale change. I don't think we're going to see any continuity until maybe Tournament 4 next year. And the reason why I say that, gee, this is a completely different change. And if you get out round one, right, think about this. If you get out round one next year, how are you building a notebook? Right, because practice cup, we don't know what's going to happen with the cup. We don't know. We we may use the cup with this bot. We, we would like to, but we don't know how much wear and tear we're going to have on this thing yet. We don't have the data on it. That's why we're testing it and breaking it as much as we can. But you, those cups, you cannot simulate. What I've noticed in practice on this, this current bot here, you can see people kind of, you know, disguising looks and whatnot. When I've run with Caesar, especially when we've been doing, pre see, it's very hard to disguise looks on this bot. It really is, and the reason why is is you have card history. There's nowhere to hide. So what that means is those simulated practice games you play, where you think you can hide stuff, you can't. It's almost a nine to ten ratio where a practice game you probably can only hide maybe five to ten percent. On this current bot, you can hide about fifty percent, maybe even seventy percent. I've hid ninety percent before. Gee, honest to God. This current bot, you really can't... There's nowhere to hide. You have card history. It remembers everything. And that's the thing. The players are going to really, really have to be careful. If you get, Especially if you get out round one, you're losing the time. You're losing that track time almost. You're losing that, that bot time. And practice games are very hard to simulate where you just lay off the gas. You have to go hard and practice, which is nice. 
So you have to almost do you, do you want to practice and be out there because you have the card history, everything is trackable. I think it's going to be a lot of gamesmanship off the table next year, which is great. I think that's going to add a little bit of layer of mentality that the players are going to have to be more strategic on when they use it, right? The bot will not always be up every time. It's going to be on a timer, right? And I don't think we're going to have this thing running at 3 in the morning, G. I mean, no offense, but <laughs> I got to sleep, right? So there's a lot of things that I think are going to be interesting off the table. On the table, though, I think someone's going to hit the setup right away. And 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 when they hit it, we have to appreciate it, right? Because it's it's a lot more continuity. There's constant algo, which is something to talk about. I, I think I played about 200 games on this thing, G. I kid you not, maybe... 10 games really felt unfair. That's it. And some of those are just five card starts, six cards. That's expected once in a while. But 10 out of 200, what is that? We're looking at what? You're a math guy. What is it? Like 5%? <laughs> Come on. That's, uh, roughly, yeah. I mean, 5% yeah. I mean, of the games are just that bad, and then 95% were clean? That, that That's unheard of. Right now, I would die for that. I mean, everyone would. Right, and so because of that, I think this game is going to become a lot more in the players' hands. A lot of pace management is back. The pace management games are going to be back. The mind games are back. The uh, ammo awareness, I guess you could call it, the ammo control, really back. And uh, I think the the more important thing, G, is if we even if we don't have the full unlimited commands that we cap it or whatnot, you can chain a little more, and you can chain you can play the chain game and. Hey, fair play, right? You can almost splice up runs and do split ammo control, which which is great. From as from a player's hosting is going to be great. I have nothing to complain about hosting, commentating, refing. Commentating is going to be absolutely fantastic. I cannot wait to crack out a couple times on a on a KT wild when someone else uses it or G man plus two to finish the game or yellow plus two, yellow plus two for the fans at home. And uh, just just kind of memorize those cards and you know. Of course, when the cards are on, if they're off, then I will. I will I'll, I'll go back to normal mode. But when they're on, some fun things happen. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be enthusiastic, just like a kid, right? That's that's how I grew up. You know, just have those fun moments. But yeah, that's all I got, G. For what to expect, uh, we're gonna keep it short tonight. Just your overall final thoughts on the Bot 2025 and uh, the program. What do you got? Yeah, I mean, I, this is probably one of the biggest announcements we had made um, in this league's history. Um, so. I think the fact that um, we're getting closer and closer to the 2025 season, I mean, there's going to be more hype uh, building, up, building up to it because it's going to be a whole new ball game go, going into that season. It's going to be our third season in the league's history, and it's going to be um, quite the evolution from when uh, you started this in March. Uh, it was uh, 20 entries and uh, a whole bunch of nonsense. Yeah. Um, but, uh yeah, I mean, I think it really just shows the evolution of the league that it's taken in a very short time. It's uh, been around, and I think uh, this is going to be a very exciting time for not just people who uh, enjoy Emery Uno, but also maybe just Uno in general, because uh, this could change the game. This could set the uh, standard for Uno to uh, come in the future. Yeah, gee, I'm really impressed. The thing about this, I built this league from my own hands, right? It's... I had basically nobody. You weren't even on it. You didn't exist as a commission member. I was just me and my boy Art, and <laughs> we had no idea what we were doing. Right? We were just two kids playing around. But point is, yeah, I, I'm impressed. The fact that we have our own bot. Obviously, we always wanted to have in-house stuff, right? There's a lot of things coming down the pipeline for 25. You got the in-house bot. A new media package is going to be announced, right? With not just this podcast, right? We do want to have interviews on the show. And, and, and the nice thing, G, is I think we can really play around with this bot a lot, right? We can have an open source. We can open patch it. Hey, look, Grim, something's wrong here, right? We're, we're getting a ton of latency issues. Or, hey, Grim, look, we got a coding error. If something happens right away, we're going to know it. We're going to find We can be as transparent, but we can fix it within, what, 30 seconds if Grim's online. <laughs> and that's the nice thing. If there is an issue, if, hey, you know, Grim, look, this, this look. The algo is stupid, right? We got what's going on fixed, right? And, and that's the nice thing about we can fix things on the spot. We can really play around with it. There's no, what's the word? There's no ridiculous request, right? Just don't be unreasonable with open source feedback. Don't be throwing a hundred things around to us. Come on. But if you throw us a couple good suggestions, we'll throw it in there. Why not, right? It's always nice to get the feedback. We just don't want to have a hundred and you take the lion's share of it. 
but I'm looking forward to it, G. Like I said, this this league has come a long way. The fact that we started with what 15 people. What are we looking at? Are we looking at 64 people, G, for D2 coming up? I mean, we're probably going to hit. Possibly, yeah. Way. That's like over, that's we're at over 120 people in the league in total. So absolutely absurd numbers. Yeah, and you got to look at this, G. That's that's hard to do, and you got to understand, G. To man, we have to manage 120 people. You know how hard it is to have 120 people buy into anything? It's not easy, right? And I know you, you've, you've, you've experienced it firsthand. It's your first year as a commission, mission, commissioner and a commission member, of course, as a full-time one doing both leagues. It's not easy. And the fact that everyone's – I want to thank everybody for buying in. You know, I don't talk much about the players, but without these guys, man, we're, we're just – we're talking to walls here, right? And I, I appreciate every player testing this bot or, or just, just learning their system and learning their platforms and just and interacting with them. You know, getting on a press conference is going to be different. There's a lot of things we're going to announce with the media package. Now it's going to be more on me, but we're going to have some new media things we're going to do. It's just going to be a fun league next year. I think, I know this year was the full version of the league G in terms of hosting and a lot of it. I think next year will be the fun. Finally, I can officially say the new era is here. The new bot is here. The media package will finally be aligned. Everything's going to come together. This is just what we saw the first year was okay. Rough sketch. Like the, it's almost like a rough draft. You get a revision of the draft. This now it's the final draft. Next year's the final draft, and then beyond it's the final. It's just going to get better, right? As as of course, just like wine, G. Right, it's just going to age better, and uh, I look forward to what we're going to see here. And I want to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart for making this happen. And shout out to Grim. I mean, without him, we don't even have a uh, consideration of a bot. So, absolutely, and he's going to be part of the uh, advi- um, advisor, advisor team, team advisor team going forward. So. Um, he'll do this up. To, uh, he'll be someone not quite the comm member, but he's going to be someone who's uh, going to be very involved with the uh, bot aspect Tech. of things. So, yeah, the te- yeah. technical technical difficulties that may arise. So that's really what those advisor roles are for. So he's going to be a big help going forward. Yep, Caesar as well. He's big with the rap. Though I expect Caesar at this rate, the way he's been performing, I expect him to be a full time commission member. Probably by the end of the year, he's definitely earned that right. I think the way he's been performing, but. We'll see what happens as the year develops. But the point is, I want to thank G for coming on. For the fans at home, we will have a full version of this podcast. Obviously, not with G, but me, Grim. We're going to get the man himself on here to talk about how he gets. I'm going to do a little bit of interview style. Obviously, G, you know I love doing interviews. You, you know, for the press conferences I do, I love doing that. So I can't wait to interview Grim. Just a little bit of how he started in coding and his story. And, of course, Cody will be here as well. He's been a big help. I just developed in this project as well, spearheading the tech operations, getting suggestions. So cannot wait for that in August. But for all of us here at MRU, and I want to thank you for the bottom of my heart from the D1, D2 player. Without you guys, we appreciate you. Couldn't do it without you guys. We love you. And, of course, check us out on Spotify, Apple Pod, and, of course, YouTube, our home base. Leave us a review. For myself and G, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for talking about 2025. We'll see you back with the next episode, G. It's back to reality, though. We're still in 24 Super League rankings. It's going to be fun. A lot of chaos has happened. We'll see you soon on that one. Good everybody.